Hello, and welcome to Stocks Down Under. Today, we're joined by Mark Gorenson, the CEO of Nanoview Semiconductor Division. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for joining us. Um, you just joined Nanoview to run the semiconductor side of things. Um, Nanoview recently acquired EMAS in Singapore at a high level uh, for starters. Can you tell us what EMAS, who EMAS is and, and what the benefits are of, uh, of the SOCs, the, the system on a chip that uh, Nanoview is developing compared to say current products in the market? Okay, so EMAS has a very revolutionary product. Um, it's uh, ultra low power which is very good for things like wearable drones, anything where battery consumption is very important. It also has a very high computational uh, efficiency where it can uh, do 12 tera operations per watt, which is better than most uh, benchmark applications. Um, so in terms of uh, the importance of this having a very high computational and efficient uh, processor that takes up very little space. This is very key in things like wearables and glasses, medical devices, drones, putting it into cell phones, anything that requires very good battery management, but also high computational power. So, you know, EMAS is right now it benchmarks against the best of the best in that reg those regards. Okay. And if you look at it purely from a technical standpoint, and don't be afraid to dive a little bit deeper into that, um, but how is EMAS different from, from products out there in terms of how does it do things differently than, than current products? So th they've done a few things that is very smart. They use the risk uh, processing power, which is the reduced instructional uh, com computing set which is more efficient than, say, the heavier processors like NVIDIA or Intel. It also uses uh, MRAM, which uh, is non-volatile memory, which doesn't consume power while it is storing particular devices. It also has some proprietary patented uh, applications in terms of turning on different parts of the chip when it's needed, saving power so nobody else has that particular capability since that's a patented uh, proprietary uh, aspect of EMAS's technology. And then down the road, one of the models or one of the uh, upgrades that we're looking at is going to our DRAM, which is even more efficient, more effective than the MRAM. So there's more things in store for making it even more efficient and more effective. Okay, and, and so with um, EMAS basically focused at AI inference at the edge, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the application areas? You mentioned a few already, but uh, specifically where uh, this particular chip would shine. So this particular chip would shine where it has, since it has a lot of high computational uh, aspects, it would be very good in terms of navigational aspects for drones. So it can have real time um, navigation in terms of uh, steering around obstacles such as birds. Uh, other aspects in flying. In terms of uh, wearables, it would be very key in terms of AI and virtual reality, in terms of being able to look at images and doing real-time computational aspects on how a person is moving in terms of the hands, the eyes, et cetera, so that those calculations would be done real-time where you don't where you want uh, very low latent uh, applications and so it doesn't go to the main processor. That would be some very key applications for it as well as security devices where you may want facial recognition, you may want uh, security applications where a room, the uh, AI processor on the fringe would actually look at the room and be able to designate if glass is breaking, temperatures change, there's movement in the room and be able to uh, say that, hey, something's different in this room and call up the security person so you don't actually have to have somebody watching um, the cameras at all times. So there's a myriad of applications you can utilize this technology for. And um, I've just named a few, but there's literally thousands that can be utilized in this particular area. Right. And so, um, and this must be a hard question, but if you were to sort of quantify that opportunity, can you talk a little bit about market opportunity, market size for this type of application? 
Well, for for any of these uh, applications for edge uh, computing power, I think by the year 2030, if I remember the statistics right, they expect this market to be a hundred billion dollars. So, I mean, it's it's astronomical in terms of everything that's going to be utilized. Uh, for edge computing, it's going to be everything from self-driving vehicles, security systems, drones, augmented reality, virtual reality, cell phones, wearables, you know, Garmin watches kind of things, um, you name it. And it's going to have edge AI, AI processing in it. Okay. And so you recently joined uh, Nanohue uh, after a very long career in, in the semiconductor industry. Can you talk a little bit about yourself and especially what attracted you to EMAS? Yeah, so I have a degree in physics and double E, and I worked at just about uh, most of the major semiconductor companies. I've manufactured just about every device that there is that you can manufacture between Intel, Freescale, on semiconductor, Honeywell, Intel, you name it. So, um, you know, I've scaled a lot of different technologies, and this one uh, actually really excited me because, you know, I, I go back to a story um, when I was working for Intel, Andy Grove, um, many years ago, had a meeting with all of us in the executive ranks, and he had this presentation, and he says, you know, I want you guys all to know that the future is all going to be about the war for eyeballs. And, you know, when you think about it, he's exactly right. The the war for eyeballs is upon us. It's the cell phones, it's watches, it's te televisions, everything you can imagine has a display in it. And so between the 3D iFly technology plus uh, this edge AI processing, those two technologies I can see could be very key in terms of being a strategic uh, company in, in the war for eyeballs. And we could have a really big marketplace and make a big dent in what's going to happen in the future. So that's kind of what sparked my interest um, going into uh, EMAS and Nanoview. Okay. And so if we look out, say, 12 or 18 months from, from today, what are the key milestones for the company? Uh, what do you want to achieve in that time frame? And uh, of course, we also, you know, we're all investors. We we need to look at sort of the commercial uh, pathway here as well. Can you talk a little bit about that as well, how you see that progress? Yeah, so I think commercially, um, we would uh, like to be able to get some good market applications for the i3D fly technology. Um, they've worked out a number of bugs on it. So it looks like that, that uh, we could be working with some potential partners on getting that going within the next few months. Um, that's kind of exciting because that'll actually bring 3D capabilities to cell phones. So I'm anxious to see how that plays out. In terms of EMAS technology, we're actually looking at uh, integrating uh, a higher density uh, random access memory, uh, RDRAM, not ac random actually, um, into the technology so that we can have a higher memory content, which is very key for adding in very complex uh, AI type instructions. So that will be key in terms of the next tape out. And then commercially for the EMAS technology, we'd like to be able to gain some traction with uh, some of the wearable guys like Meta or uh, Apple, uh, Samsung, any of the big guys, if we can start having them sample our product and start giving us feedback on things that they like about it, things that they'd like to see differently and start working on a strategic roadmap to be able to get uh, our technology embedded into uh, some of these great technologies, that would be fantastic. And then we're looking at, you know, where other might be some good applications that'll be a little quicker, which may be drones, which uh, may be uh, wearables like the Garmin watches, uh, things of that nature for doing uh, real-time calculations. Um, and then the other thing would be security devices and intelligent cameras could also be very lucrative markets that we could maybe potentially get into very quickly. Okay. The automotive and the medical side are a little bit longer out there because the 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 uh, qualification period is quite lengthy going through all of the medical approvals as well as going through all of the automotive approvals. So those will probably be down the road, but those two markets also have very exciting applications for self-driving vehicles. And then with the aging population, there's a number of great applications that we could use uh, 
this technology and in terms of medicals and implantables. So that also looks exciting for the future. <clears throat> All right. And so last question, Mark, um, what needs to happen from a technical point of view uh, on the development side design maybe uh, for the chip to get to that stage to be able to engage with, with these uh, potential customers? So we already have some application uh, boards that we can actually start working with customers at right now. So we, we're working on trying to get those sampled to uh, certain uh, customer segments that we'd like to partner with. And then we have another planned iteration that'll be going through the manufacturing process, which we may be able to integrate uh, the RD RAM and we may be able to uh, fix a couple of uh, small issues that we have in the chip. Um, and that'll be later on uh, in the next six months or so. So look forward to seeing that uh, play out as well. But in the meantime, we'd like to be able to parallel process in terms of getting some customers with the boards we already have and then start getting some good feedback and uh, start working with customers on uh, how they see this implemented in their technology. Right. Excellent. A lot to look forward to and a uh, lot to look forward to for, for investors in the next little while. Uh, Mark Goranson, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks very much. It was a very exciting call and things look very bright and, you know, I can't wait to get this thing moving and get uh, this technology implemented. It's going to be a fun ride, I think. It's great to hear. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Nice talking with you.